What's up fellow Lords of Gaming and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to jump into some Marvel Future Fight and we're going to talk about the 116 update details for the Goblin Queen. I'm going to try to breeze past this because I'm very disappointed in this update and I want to give you guys my insights to this. So I'm not going to do the traditional thing where I kind of run down some of the content and uh, take a look at, you know, um, characters line by line, especially because we have mostly four new heroes. So it doesn't really make sense to do that. Um, and the Rachel Summers improvement is her first uniform. So it's going to be an improvement overall. But I'll give you my thoughts process on some of the, the, the characters inside here. So. <clears throat> Havoc essentially joins the game as a tier three character and he's a leadership with a 50% increase of energy attack. I'm a little disappointed in his overall kit because he does have the ignore targeting. And I, if I'm correct, 3RL said that he's supposed to be a PVP character, but there's not a whole lot in his kit that I'm exactly seeing that makes him like a PVP character. Like he, yeah, it just doesn't really look like it's there. Like it's like you just do the enables uh, ignore targeting on a character and because the character has ignored tar targeting, that makes him a PvP character. But then when you read the rest of the stuff inside of here, it doesn't really feel that way. He's got a lot of frenzy buffs that seems to be copied and paste. And then the accumulation skill on his character kit, these things don't necessarily lend the character to being a PvP character. Um... I really like his energy lock passive ability here where he has the 10% chance to absorb energy damage and upon absorption, all basic attacks are increased by 5%. So uh, you get that all the way up to a max of 20%. That looks like that can be good um, overall, I'd like to see how that works inside the game. But what I'm a little disappointed in specifically is that the kit, if he's supposed to be a PVP character, it doesn't really look like it. And as he's supposed to be the character that we're following through in the epic quest, you want to feel like this is probably going to be one of the more impactful characters in the update. However, it doesn't really feel that way. Um, next up, we get Exodus. I think a lot of disappointment is here for Exodus because he's coming to the game as a tier two character. Now, I think his leadership does hint at the fact that he's more than likely going to have his tier three in the mid month update or probably sometime in the near future, uh, which is still disappointing because it you're basically at this point telling us that you're, uh, nickeling and diming the players for, um, for stuff because by giving us Exodus in the split the way they did Saber 2, for instance, in the uh, initial update and then the mid month update is saying that you already had this in the queue pre. It wasn't like then the next two weeks you were developing this and it came up, you already had it. So the equivalency that I have for most players, it'd be the idea that you go out and purchase a game. You went to GameStop, Best Buy or something like that. And then within the next day or a few hours after the delivery of that game, they said, hey, I have more DLC content for you and I'm, I want you to pay for this DLC content. Well, no, it's not DLC content because it's day one DLC. That means you already had it prepared and you stripped it from the game in order to kind of sell me half of a title. And so and that is going to be disappointment regardless if you come back to Exodus in the mid month or if you come back to him even when the next two months, because as we know from this, that most of these games, this is six months development behind. So I don't really care for it. I don't like it at all. Now, the rest of his kit, um, nothing necessarily like to write home about. He does look like he's set up to maybe be a PVP character with some of his invincible skills, his recovery, his barriers. He has frenzy buff, which they seem to have copied and pasted frenzy buffs on every character inside this game. I'm interested to see where that is um, and where that's going. So it, it's interesting. Um, the interesting thing about his is that he gets basically is the whole, his whole leadership is basically applied to himself. And so it's, he's his own self buffing character. And basically for you having support characters with Exodus that are mutant allies, then you basically get the, uh, 50% all the way up to 50% buff. Now, this, uh, Nebula has this ability as her leaderships. I believe it is her anyways. Uh, kit as well where it's like when combat type allies basically enter battle then it increases we've seen this buff before so it's a different way of uh bring it into into the game so it is what it is hope summers looks to be a really good character the disappointment that i have with hope summers kit specifically if you go to her leadership is that she looks to be a leadership support for cable and she was in that regard, we've seen this before with like Miles Morales, but before they finally made Miles a character that stands on his own and his uh, his leadership became it just applied to, you know, blah, 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 spider characters and it applied to, to self. 
this is basically something they should she looks like somebody they should have released when cable got his tier four so then you could have seen the full power so now they've basically given you cables uh power kit or increased his kit in another way and so what she's going to really be relegated to is like a leadership role for cable who's then basically going to be the backup if your cable dies or something like that which she does look like she's probably pretty powerful to be the backup to a cable but it's like why introduce a character this far out from cables um tier four into this update that looks like she basically becomes a uh, support type character for cable specifically I, I don't get that one necessarily she does have a recovery effect on her abilities inside of here and she like i said they did a lot of copy paste of frenzy buffs whoever is over at the helm doing the kits uh yeah somebody needs to be fired then we get Madeline Pryor. And I think the disappointment here with Madeline Pryor specifically is this would have been an opportunity for them to take some type of uh, chance, some type of risk. And she should have been introduced probably as a native tier three with the ability to go to tier four immediately. I don't want to see the Madeline Pryor get tier four in a mid month. I want to see Madeline Pryor get tier four now. The only justification for having Madeline Pryor get a tier four in the mid month is essentially that she has the ability to uh you it's going to take some players some time to basically deliver her kit so giving her tier four in the mid month kind of gives players time to generate towards the character get a feel for her where she at when uh, you get her to tier three and then you get her to tier four she's going to be a very costly character though and the problem with that as well is that the epic quest is going to cost her 7700 crystals which from me looking at it has no justification for 7700 crystal increase or uh, 1100 crystal increase from the 6600s it really doesn't and i'll explain that when we get down to that but queen's will removes all debuffs cool uh she looks mighty set up you can see here she has a counterattack and enable targeting ignore targeting skill she's got some really good uh recovery 25 percent on a two and uh 20 on her four and uh so that's look really cool she's got the accumulation as well so she looked like she's really set up to kind of catch up to gene at this point right which makes sense she's a clone of gene overall i could say like her kit doesn't look bad at all like it looks good but i'm very nervous about it because we have seen for instance like molecule man perfect example right we came they came out with molecule man and we paid the 6600 crystals basically get to molecule man and it was an absolute dud of a t3 um you know absolute dud of a t3 but we kind of knew going in that he was pop probably going to be a dud um so i would hold off on paying that 6600 crystals at the moment um 7700 crystals at the moment if you really want to get madeline prior just because uh i would let some some of the you know the content creators do some testing and stuff like that before you just race to spend 6600 crystals on this because yeah it yeah so anyway, so then we get Rachel Summer. She's the one character that's getting a new uniform upgrade. So regardless, this was going to be a bene uh, overall benefit to her. The one disappointment that I have with her uniform is this change right here for her leadership. This was once applied to all allies and now is just applied to Phoenix Force allies. So she had the mind resist that was just all allies. Why it wasn't left to all allies, I don't know. Maybe this is a mistake because they were just copying and pasting, like I said, and this was still supposed to be all allies and this was supposed to be just Phoenix Force allies. But overall, either way, the skill should have just remained as all allies. Um, the rest of her kit, it is it it's not a de degrade at all in terms of what she has on the kit. This is definitely like a bonus kit for her. I'm a little concerned as to why she doesn't have uh, any damage accumulation on her skill. Like at this point, it seems like character kits pretty much need damage accumulation because her frenzy buffs that they've given her aren't necessarily as as copied and pasted throughout her kit as I would have expected either. So looking forward to seeing what 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 what's there cyclops i think this is going to be a huge disappointment um i, I like the five percent pierce damage that's here and the ten percent hp recovery on his uh piercing beam attack it's going to really be determined about how impactful this energy attack which only goes up to uh 100 for 10 seconds it's not like you're going to e eclipse this so 
but this could be very, very big for all of his skills. I don't want to um, diminish what this could mean because essentially you're saying that his energy attack is going to increase by 25% every one second. So basically at the max of the skill up to 100%, you're going to basically be increasing his energy attack for f first four seconds to get to a hundred and then you basically have six seconds worth of time to basically you get all his skills have 100 percent of energy attack that's increasing there so this could be a very very hard hitting skill but it's still with a recovery of 10 percent hp um looks like it could be really really slow so the way that i would look at this essentially is cyclops on the map with his current uniform current skills you can see he's got the ignore targets dodge rate which isn't bad he's got the increased guards he critical rates so he's going to definitely be hitting some crits on those and then when you look at his kit overall like he's got the accumulation so this is where you're going to want to see at the end of the four seconds he basically gets this uh, increase of the 25. So in, the, in and out on there for that final six seconds. Um, but we get the bleed for the decrease inside of here. You get the recovery. Okay, so he's got the 25% recovery HP. I would have probably liked to see that re that recovery HP inside his tier four maybe be an additional 20% instead of 10%. So that way he, you know, he doesn't feel like the glass cannon that he was um, because right now you're basically looking at Cyclops as his leadership inside of here. Maybe these they could have done something to improve the kit overall. So like, for instance, he's 40 percent increase of energy attack for all allies. Havoc is sitting at 50 percent, understandably so that basically he's sitting over here as natural born leader with all allies and he is still all basic for 45 and 30 as well. But I would like to maybe see some improvements on the kit. It's just really, really weird that we're this far out and we're still saying that we're giving a T4 at this point. It's not like Black Widow where it's a couple of months past. This is almost like a full year on past now since we've seen this uniform be introduced. So it just doesn't make sense to me that we just get this uniform, nothing else, especially with all of the uniforms from the Hellfire Golem, from the Krakoa series that you could have done for Cyclops. And we get this um this continuation of the uniform so i think there's going to be a large disappointment there for the player base uh with that character overall next up we get the madeline prior uh havoc and madeline prior tier threes at this point tier threes have seemed to be just copy and paste to me overall everybody gets the ignore targets dodge rate everybody gets the 80 percent chance to penetrate everybody gets the invincible and everybody gets the increased basic damage or all attack whatever by a certain percent it just copy paste like it just depends on whether or not other characters they're, they're going to get additional like little abilities Madeline's uh, tier three actually looks pretty cool to me. Um, Havoc's just not so much. Um, so I'm really interested to see where she goes with hers just because she looks like she's going to be a really good character. She's definitely, if she gets a tier four in the mid month, she will definitely catch up to um, Jean and probably be a very viable character. And you'll have two female characters that are just like in unbeatable inside of, uh, inside of the, inside of, uh, pvp inside pve like that's just the truth of the matter um but we'll have to see uh what the kit looks like on paper then we get the awakenings again awakenings same thing copy paste at this point right like everything is just copy paste and here it's even worse like you can read through the skills and crit rate crit damage ignore invincible remove all debuffs increase all basic attacks basic defense it's like literally copy paste for 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 for, for everything burn fracture mind blast like this is like the worst copy paste and even more so, like paying attention to the um, to the uh, the actual animations, all you're basically doing is swapping which character is actually doing the dive bomb, but everything else with the column of fire and everything else with the hits and stuff like that is exactly the same. Just change out which character is in the dive bomb appearance, and that's it. That's all they've done with this. It is like literally the copy paste, and this is why I start to question. The epic quest so i'm going to move this up so that way we can go take a look at some of the epic quests because i have the most probably to say about the epic quest because this is the biggest disappointment for me in the game so if you basically come over and you take a look at the epic quest for instance uh we got the goblin queen you basically have to pay 7700 crystals to be able to unlock her so 7700 crystals will unlock hope summers for you will unlock the mission quest rewards and then you basically get ex exodus and havoc and all of those things the ability to get those characters and basically level them up most people probably are going to have the other four characters um 
well, I can't say most people because I can't remember the ways that you could attain Rachel and Kid Omega prior to this. But I think I think probably a good percentage of the players are still riding on this game right now. You're gonna have to level up Havoc, Exodus, and then Hope in order to get the uh, to get Madeline prior rewards. If you don't and you're like a new player, this basically becomes a very, very expensive and time consuming update, specifically because of your access to uh, X-Men, X-Men uh, items or, you know, the things like Mkron shards and Phoenix feathers and stuff like that, um, which they did upgrade inside this update. Um, but your access to those and whether or not you already have the characters leveled up is going to be very detrimental to your acceleration of getting Madeline Pryor, which could take you some time. Um, but the most disappointing thing overall is that this is going to cost 7,700 crystals or you just basically pay the $50, $50 cash. So, and it becomes a difference, a discrepancy here, because if I pay the $50, I automatically get a thousand crystals. I've already said this multiple times. The one thing that I do like about Moral Future Fight is basically every hundred crystals equals a dollar. Makes the, the return on value here, return on investment, easy to determine, right? So basically, instead of it costing me $50, essentially, I'm getting 10, I'm getting a thousand crystals. So it basically costs me 40. If you as a free to play player, somebody like that, you're basically giving up $77 worth of uh, money that you grinded from this game. And so there's a $37 difference between you purchasing for crystals versus you purchasing for cash. So you can clearly see they've done this intentionally. Now, here goes the worst part about this. I want to make this clear. This is the worst part. It's I don't care that you see the Madeline save screen over here. That doesn't justify an $1,100 crystal value in the game, especially where you put a tier two character inside the game. I mean, if you go look back at the Galactic Imperative, we still got a tier two character in terms of fucking Nova being in the game. A tier two character in terms of Praetor Gladiator being in the game. Why are we still on tier two characters? It makes absolutely zero sense. So saying that I got to pay 1100 crystals would mean to me that uh, the screensaver ain't it, right? That doesn't justify the $1,100 increase. It, it doesn't. It will never. I don't care what you said. And then when we're looking at some of the rewards initially here, you can see like 40 of what? Like this is what we get in Norn Stones as rewards for 7,700 crystals. I don't want to see a Norn Stone as a possibility for a reward if I'm paying 7,700 crystals instead of $50. Norn stones should not be my rewards. I want to see tier four materials. I want to see tier three, tier three and tier four materials as rewards. I want to see, uh, you know, uh, enchanted. I want to see Uru. Uh, that's level six. I don't want to see Norn stones. The reward things in this game have been so far off and it's made even clear how far off and outdated they are when you look at the collection completion reward. So for instance here, if I jumped inside jumped inside any of these, you would basically look, let's go back to the, to this is the newest one, which we would have for the Eternals. And you can see here we had Mythic Chest, right? Mega Uniform Upgrade Ticket is inside this one. A Mega Uniform Upgrade Ticket was in this one. You get a uh, dimension chest ESO eight and you get a biometrics like, OK, with the mega form uniform upgrade ticket being a possibility of, of, of collecting that would have had way more value to be able to say this is going to cost you seventy seven hundred crystals. You're getting nothing in here. Getting twenty five Exodus genes as a grind is nothing. I really don't care about that. A tier two advancement ticket inside this game at this point is a dud. That's like a zero. You might as well remove that shit from the game completely because you might as well take the place of the tier two advancement ticket and just make that a mega tier two advancement ticket. Rank one black antimatter at 250. Please, please. It ain't it. It's just not doing it. It's not at all. Like these rewards for the epic quests look so stale by comparison to where they were and where they should be. Like, for instance, if I go back into some one of the oldest ones, which is Rise of the X-Men, you'll notice inside here, this one had six rewards. And if you look at that, you basically for the collection, Phoenix Feathers, X genes for 20 for 50. So I can choose for any characters. I don't care about Exodus because Exodus is a tier two character. I can't use him anywhere but freaking Shadowland at this point. The six star mega rank up ticket would have been a whole lot more helpful for me in terms of leveling up a character and becomes a whole lot easier for me not to have to spend on a character. 
Uh, the mythic chest is sent inside here. Extreme obelisk and an Mkron crystal for 200, right? Would have helped me out a whole lot more in terms of acceleration. Putting a rank one black antimatter inside there makes no sense. None whatsoever. So I'm very disappointed in this because it looks like there's the ju there's no ju the justification for that $1,100 crystal increase is the screensaver and that just ain't it. Like I don't care what you say. You animated a a, a uh, picture and that ain't it. I know that didn't take anybody any time to do and I barely justify the $1,100 increase cost in here. But it gets worse now at this point because we were expecting maybe, you know, with the update that they spent time doing some other quality of life stuff and I just don't see it. So what they added in terms of this was an Uru amplifier. So they've monetized more of the gameplay. So at current, if you were to go inside any of your characters, you would look at their um, their gears, for instance, and you would come over here and say, hey, I want to increase it amplify the uru you would click on this amplify you pay 30,000 amp 30,000 to amplify one time or 300,000 to chain amplify so what they've done along with adding these new uh elemental odin's blessings for you know your character so like if you have thor and you want to make him more powerful uh you basically give him four of these odin's blessings and he basically ends up with an eight percent lightning damage increase and in all basic attack so Yay, right? A good way for you to min-max your characters and spend some money, right? Um, so anyways, if not, you basically get the Enchanted Uru Amplifier. So now, if you don't want to leave it to luck, you now have the ability to get these Enchanted Uru Amplifiers and it will automatically amplify yours. Uh, it doesn't talk about the way to acquire these Uru Amplifiers, so I'm, I don't want to shit on it too hard, but... Uh, yeah, we'll have to see where that goes because I'm going to imagine that these are going to be in the shop and they're probably going to be a new way to sell packs uh, by telling you instead you can amplify all five slots now by basically paying for an Uru amplifier that's probably going to cost you $20 and you can amplify all your stats so that way you can forego the luck of trying to do your chain amplification. And like we've seen from some other games, I know that the probability rates for you doing these chain amplifications can be adjusted. And we've seen developers uh, in the past, like Maple Story and things like that, do things where they've literally played and finagled with the probability rates and behind the scenes. So I'm expecting that people's probability rates on getting all five of their Urus to be uh, amplified are going to decrease. Uh, yeah, that's, that's my, that's my, that's, that's my thought. We'll see how well that, uh, that pans out, but an Uru amplification is what we asked for. We really asked for that. Um, the new artifacts in the game, um, the majority of them are pretty like whatever. The two that stand out the most are going to be the Madeline Pryor Identity Crisis and the Time Traveler Racial Summers. Mostly because it looks like Madeline Pryor's becomes a must have, right? If you're going to play with a character and play her inside PvP, she gets the Hell of Wolverine effect with her um, with her artifact by basically recovering for 50% HP and her HP not dropping below uh below one uh she also gets the guard break immunity as well on this on the on the uh artifact so to me this becomes probably one of the most single sought after artifacts for a character inside the game next to the hell and wolverine ones if you don't know what i mean just take a look at the artifact like i don't have it for wolverine um but i do have it for hella where is she at so if we go universal super villains take away the mutant and we go here where is hella Ah, uh, I can't see my Hella. Where's my Hella? Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, nope, you're Kang, bro. You're Kang. God dang it. I hate playing on blue stacks with this because it never seems to work. So if you go over to Artifact, for instance, and you notice here, she gets the infinite death passes. And you can see it's the uh, guard break immunity. The HP doesn't drop below one or be below zero. And then the recovery happens for the skill for 20% after HP. That's 20% because of where I'm at with a four star uh, artifact for Hela. So essentially, that's the same artifact that you're getting for uh, for for Madeline Price. So it's going to become one of those sought after ones just because of how uh, tied to like Jean Grey and her clones, she's probably going to be 
I'm going to say on par or just below par Jean. I don't imagine she's going to be above Jean. I just don't. Um, and then time travel Rachel, she basically gets the activation rate when she dies. She revives with 50% of max HP. So those become um, two good artifacts that you're probably going to see in the game writ large as opposed to um, these other three, which are just increased basic damage dealt and decrease basic damage received to be tr truthful and quite honest with you i really just don't give a goddamn about this uh future past specifically because of what they're doing with the epic quest but it does have the special icons inside there i do like the goblin queen icon overall which is an available in the mythic pass and then the havoc one is available for the legendary pass i'm not really excited about that at all the rachel summers one looks really cool so i'm gonna imagine the rachel is gonna be available somewhere else and then um i'm gonna imagine that she's gonna be available in your um uh luna is gonna be available in like your purchased what is it the the event event rewards or something like that um so yeah take a look for those now they did increase the improvements for the phoenix feathers and your mcron storage and your mcron shards so before they were at six thousand um now you are at nine thousand for those so if you go inside your inventory for instance um inside here for your materials basically you can see like you're capped out on uh phoenix feathers and cross shards to be about six thousand um and they made them at nine thousand now now the disappointing thing to me is i still for the life of me cannot figure out why 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 they're doing this like for instance i'm not capped out on any of my other materials in terms of storage why apply a cap against these at all whether they're 9,000 or whether they're 6,000, I get that the X-Men, the mutants are limited characters, but these should not be something that's capped. Just uncap them. Let us collect the rewards. I get it. You're trying to make it so that we can sell things either way, whatever. The contribution rewards for the, uh, the dimension, excuse me, the danger room characters that were available for Rachel Summers, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Professor X and Abomination are now going to be available in the store consistently it doesn't say where they're at then they make this bullshit update to timeline battle that just makes no sense it just basically shows and allows you an auto repeat or stop repeating when their points are low or the um when you basically have accumulated so many of the points that you have to basically stop because there's a cap on like those tokens right that you acquire um which makes no sense just remove the goddamn cap um easy easier than added something into the game that doesn't need it or wasn't asked for period like i don't remember any players asking for this um and then they in, they added improvement here for the for the freaking whatever for the purchase of time of uh, uh, battle pass and future pass options and other world battle battle pass stuff so that way you can purchase these things for crystals nobody asked for this I, I don't know why these things are there the uniform store filtering thing that was trash it was just copy paste just looks stupid as hell they've made it available so you can sell mega rank up tickets mega mastery tickets premium enhancements and advanced type enhancements i guess this comes into play because we haven't really had as many characters introduced um over the over the past like two years so like you're stacking up on these things and they probably you know just sitting inside your um inside your inventory space at this point so giving a way to get rid of some of that clears up some of your inventory but this is just really stupid because who's selling mega rank up tickets who's selling um ad advanced type tickets nobody's selling these items you're holding on to these because you're having some expectation that things might change so you telling me that you're gonna that you're giving me the ability to sell these things don't sell them you, that may means that we're gonna end up with more characters that need to be um that that we're gonna need to use these items for and you not having them is gonna probably hurt you more than it is like nobody needs to sell these things don't don't sell those hold on to them It'd be stupid. These would be things like I would tell you right off the bat, like let them let them clog up your inventory. Um, the rest of these updates that they have down here um, just are all trash. Like there's nothing um, really overall that you care about. So like bottom line is I think Netmarble, the developers for Marvel Future Fight, just shooting themselves in the foot with the with the way that they're doing things, the the inability to come along. As I've played other uh, mobile games like the um, 
what am I playing? Black Clover and um, Tower of God. I'm starting to realize just how dated Marvel Future Fight feels and in terms of rewards and in terms of, and, and those are gotcha games. And I will say that it, Marvel Future Fights feels so dated in regards to those things. And it's just sad because they have the ability to uh, capitalize on an IP that is very popular um, with a lot of the demographic that you would want to target. Um, and they're just failing, failing because they're not uh, they're not listening to the community um, at writ large. Still introducing tier two characters when we literally have the board of tier fours makes no sense. I just don't get it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. Peace.